Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the Human Immunodeficiency Virus or HIV. We're going to talk specifically about its structure and its method of replication. Now for a virus to be able to replicate it needs to be inside of a host cell. So what we'll do is we'll talk about the, the key uh, structural components on this diagram that we've got on the screen and then we'll talk about how it actually replicates using said host cell. So let's start with number one. Now this is just a very simple diagram of uh, virus. If you if you go to the internet and textbooks, there's many different uh, versions of this particular image. You might find another virus called a bacteriophage that does look um, slightly different, but we will talk about that in a few minutes time. So using this picture, what we've got for number one, on the outside, almost looks like a kind of flower-esque shape, but these are meant to represent what are called attachment proteins. So let's just put that label in there. And all of these labels, we're going to talk about what their role is in terms of viral replication. So as the name suggests, these attachment proteins would ultimately attach to the host cell that we're talking about. Now, a protein on the actual HIV binds to what's called the CD4 protein, and that's commonly found on helper T cells. Again, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about what those uh, things actually mean, but for the moment, we're just going to label this as an actual structure. So we've got attachment proteins around the outside. Number two in this diagram represents what's called the capsid. So let's put that one in place. So number two represents the capsid. If we look at number three, that is a lipid envelope. Lipid, another word for fat. So it's kind of like a fatty envelope or surrounding to this particular uh, virus. And during the process of replication, we'll get to see where this envelope comes from. So number three is a lipid or fatty envelope. Number four refers to this sort of yellowish, yellowy green central component in the HIV this actual uh, viral structure, and this is its genetic material. More specifically, so if we write genetic material, what's really key is that this genetic material is in the form of RNA. So not DNA, but RNA. Now I do have separate videos on the difference between DNA and RNA, RNA being ribonucleic acid. So that's what the genetic material is in a virus. Around the outside, for number five, we'll just, for completeness sake, we'll put in, it's called the matrix. Now, related more to number four, the RNA, is what we have labelled as number six. Now, number six here represents enzymes called reverse transcriptase. So, now that reverse transcriptase, again, if we just make a note here, it's an enzyme. And let's just think about what the role of that would be. So in videos I've done on transcription and translation, we see that transcription is the formation of what's called messenger RNA from a DNA template. It's part of protein synthesis. So as you can imagine, this enzyme almost reverses that process. It uses an RNA template to form DNA, and that's exactly how this virus is going to ultimately replicate, and that we're going to move on to uh, just now. So what we've got here is a diagram, a very simple diagram showing viral replication. Now, the reason, you'll notice in the middle of the diagram, if I just circle this, you'll see it looks very different to the HIV uh, viral diagram we've just labelled. This is what's known as a bacteriophage. Different shape type of virus. Now, it, for the purposes of this video, it does exactly the same thing. It will replicate pretty much in exactly the same way. The reason why I've used a diagram that includes this rather than a picture of the virus we've just labelled is because of this fact right here. And it's just something to note that if the host cell were to be a bacteria that the virus would replicate in, then it tends to be a bacteriophage, a bacteriophage, doesn't matter how you say it, that will ultimately uh, 
attack and replicate it. Now, in our example, what we're going to talk about in terms of HIV replication is the host cell being a T cell. So a T cell or a T lymphocyte of the helper kind is uh, discussed in the topic of immunity. We talk about helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells, and I do have a separate video on that. But the reason, again, just going back why I've got included a diagram here with a bacteriophage is just to make this point that if the host cell were a bacteria, then the virus tends to be a bacteriophage. It's just a little extra FY bit of information that I thought I'd just pass on. So let's start by, first of all, describing the method of replication once HIV is in the bloodstream. So, following infection, HIV enters the bloodstream and it will circulate around the body. So that's really key just to make a note of that what we're describing here ultimately is a blood-borne virus. So this is a virus travelling and circulating in the blood. Now, a protein on the HIV, and we talked about those attachment proteins, binds to what's called the CD4 protein. Now, that is most commonly found on a helper T cell. Now, for the purposes of this uh, video, we're going to pretend, instead of this being a bacteria, that this is a T cell, or more specifically, a helper T cell that we've got. So I've just put that in there just to make that particular point. But this is a helper T cell that we're referring to as our host cell. So this is going to be our little note. This is going to be our host, allowing the virus to replicate. And we're going to put on the surface. In fact, we'll put it just where the other virus is. This little red box and that little red dot, that's going to represent what's called the C. D4 protein, a protein on the surface of the T cell that the HIV particle will bind to. Now that whole stage there has its own name and that part is referred to, so we'll put this as attachment. So when we talk about viral replication or specifically HIV replication, that first stage is referring to something called attachment, where the virus attaches to that host cell. Now, once that happens, what we find is that the protein capsid that we've referred to fuses with the cell surface membrane of the T cell. So the capsid of the HIV fuses with the outer cell membrane of the host, and then the viral RNA and enzymes, so reverse transcriptase enzymes, get injected into that host cell. And that is a phase known as penetration. So let's just put that note in there. So phase two is called penetration. And that is when, as we've said, the viral RNA and enzymes get injected into the host T cell. It ultimately is going to be incorporated into the host genome, but let's just make a little note here about what penetration involves. So, we inject RNA Plus the enzymes into the host. Now HIV will then use reverse transcriptase enzyme to convert the virus's RNA into DNA, into viral DNA. Now viruses that do that, that can, can take RNA and convert it into DNA, belong to a special group that we call the retroviruses. Now Let's just add that bit of information. To this diagram. So once we've had the injection of RNA and enzymes into the host, the RNA is converted to what's called viral DNA. And as we said, those that are able to do this, those viruses that do this, belong to a group called the, 
we'll put the name in. They are known as the retroviruses. Retroviruses, the ones that can take the RNA and produce viral DNA from that. So we've had attachment, we've had penetration. Now the next stage ultimately we can call, or has its own name of, nucleic acid and protein synthesis. So you can see what we need to do is start making some viral proteins now. So once we have converted the viral RNA into viral DNA, that newly formed viral DNA gets inserted into the T cell nucleus, where it becomes incorporated into its own genetic material. The HIV DNA is then used in normal transcription in the nucleus where messenger RNA is created. Now, ultimately, so what, we, what we're saying is that we have some HIV DNA in the host cell that gets incorporated into the main genome in the nucleus. And then when we have just normal transcription leading to, as part of protein synthesis, we're ultimately going to make some new viral proteins and some new viral enzymes, some new viral nucleic acid, etc. So the third stage, three, is incorporation into genome. So the incorporation of the viral DNA into the genome. And transcription. So as I said again, once we've got that viral DNA, we incorporate it into the T cell nucleus. It becomes part of its own that T cell's genetic material, and through transcription, we get to create messenger RNA, and that gives us the instructions to make new viral proteins, enzymes, and nucleic acid. And you can see that in this picture. Or if I just put a red asterisk on the picture just here, you can see that we've got viral DNA being used to make viral, let's include the word viral because that's really crucial here, viral messenger RNA. And if we follow the diagram through, ultimately we're making viral proteins. So the next stage after that, ultimately, is referring to that messenger RNA. So once we've got the messenger RNA, messenger viral um, messenger viral RNA rather, it leaves the nucleus via the nuclear pore, it completes protein synthesis at the ribosomes, it makes these new HIV particles. So that we've just put in a separate step. So number four, once we've had transcription, we've had protein synthesis. make new viral particles and that's what this part of the diagram presents now the name given to the new viral particles that we create the name we give them are virions so virions the name we give to new viral particles. And what we get are new viruses or viral particles, these virions, assembling inside the host. So we refer to protein synthesis making new viral particles, and then we use those particles called virions, and we assemble uh, ultimately new viruses. So assembly of new virions is our next kind of stage. Then finally what we have to do, as the diagram says, is release those new virions, release the new viral particles. So let's just finish up by talking about how that actually happens. So these HIV particles, they break away from the helper T cell and with a piece of the cell surface membrane surrounding them. That is what forms the lipid envelope as the new virus is formed. So if you remember on the first diagram we labelled, we said where that lipid envelope comes from. Ultimately, when we get to stage five here in this diagram, so the release... Of viral particles, you can see these newly formed viruses and virions, 
spiral particles, they leave the cell and they grab with them, if you like, a piece of the cell surface membrane and that will help to form the brand new lipid envelope. Now it's at this stage where the person is said to be HIV positive. But HIV replication, however, often goes into dormancy and it only recommences leading to AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, much, much later. Now a question, a common exam question on this is, how does HIV cause the symptoms of AIDS? Which on the face of it seems like a tricky question. Now there is one that is worth six marks, and this, this very question worth six marks, which is quite a lot. How does HIV cause the symptoms of AIDS? Now for this question, all you have to do is just remember how important the helper T cells are in cell mediated immunity. Without them, you can't stimulate the B cells to be produced, so you can't produce any antibodies. You can't stimulate cytotoxic T cells to destroy any pathogens, and nor do you produce any memory T cells. So ultimately, if you think about it, that is when our immune system would be compromised. And if it's compromised, that's when secondary infections are more likely. Remember, it's these infections that kill AIDS sufferers, not HIV specifically. So they have a little bit about HIV structure and the method of replication. Hope that helps.